Light microscopes use magnifying lenses to focus and reflect light waves to magnify objects. This diagram shows a light microscope. The first light microscopes were most likely invented in the 1590s in the Netherlands by makers of eyeglasses. Modern light microscopes look very different to these early examples. For your exam, you aren't required to know details of the history of the microscope, but you do need to know about the two different types of microscopes, one of which is the light microscope. What are the different parts of a light microscope? This is a diagram of a typical light microscope. This area just here is the objective lens. Typically, there are three of these to choose from, for example, 5 times, 10 times, and 25 times magnification. Normally, you would start with the smallest and then work your way up. Just underneath the objective lens is the stage where the specimen is placed. And underneath the stage is the light source. Going back up to the top of the microscope, this part is the eyepiece that you would look through. This large dial just below the eyepiece is the coarse focusing dial. This quickly and easily moves the stage up and down to adjust the focus as you look through the eyepiece. The smaller dial beneath this one is the fine focus. This moves the stage up and down sensitively for sharpening the focus. You will be expected to use a microscope like this one in required practicals, but you won't be asked to label one in an exam. What are electron microscopes? Electron microscopes use electron beams instead of light rays to produce an image on a computer screen. The electrons within the electron beam interact with the sample and are picked up by a detector. The electron microscope was invented much more recently by German scientists in 1931. There are two types of electron microscope. What are they? Transmission electron microscopes, or TEM, are used to examine thin slices or sections of cells or tissues. Transmission electron microscopes were first invented in 1931. Scanning electron microscopes, or SEM, have a larger field of view, so they can be used to examine surface structures. Scanning electron microscopes were invented a little bit later, in 1937. These are often used at lower magnifications. You may see images from both types of electron microscope, but we'll only have to explain how electron microscopy has increased our understanding of subcellular structures in terms of magnification and resolution. So what is the major difference in the images produced by light microscopes and electron microscopes? Electron microscopes have a greater magnification and resolving power than light microscopes. Light microscopes have a maximum resolution of about 200 nanometers. This means we can't distinguish two points closer than 200 nanometers apart because the image all merges into one. However, electron microscopes can go much smaller to around 0.1 nanometer. This has enabled biologists to see and study subcellular structures in much finer detail. This image on the left side of your screen shows a light microscope photograph of plant cells. And this image on the right is an electron micrograph. In the electron micrograph, we can magnify further and see the structure of the chloroplasts, mitochondria, and other organelles, even proteins, in high resolution. Ribosomes are too small to see with a light microscope, but we can see them with an electron microscope. The electron micrograph is black and white, but colour can be added using computer software. So then, for the exam, it's really important that you can understand how microscopy techniques have developed over time and also be able to explain how electron microscopy has increased understanding of subcellular structures in terms of differences in magnification and resolution. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE Biology course. See you there!